Hey, Storytime grown-ups. Miss Lisa here from Worthington Park Library, um, coming to you with some fun ideas to extend your family story time today. All right, so like I said, we're talking all about families. I hope you had a chance to watch the story time video. Uh, feel free to go watch it. Miss Jane does a great job, of course. Um, and then you can come back to me. That'd be okay. All right, so I had a few ideas. The first one is that you can make a whole family out of popsicle sticks or pipe cleaners. If you've never made a pipe cleaner family, I should have brought a pipe cleaner in. But basically, you'll just loop at the midpoint the pipe cleaner around your hand, twist it down a little bit, give it arms, twist those down a bit, and then they'll be the legs. Um, it's pretty easy to do. You can imagine it and do it a little differently. That would be fine. I also, I did bring in an example of a pipe cleaner, some pipe cleaner people um, that I made real fast. If you have the wider pipe cleaner, or pipe cleaners, popsicles, if you have the wider popsicles, they make um, slightly more fun people, but you can still use them if you just have the little ones around. Um, so these are just a couple of the really thin popsicles. I would recommend that your child make one for every member of your family and whoever they count as family. If it's a best friend too, if they want to do them for the pets, do them for the pets. Um, so you'll make one for every member of the family and then you can make an envelope house and try to decorate it to look like your home. So if you take an envelope and you open it up, it gives you a little bit of a roof um, and then you can color on the front to make it look like your house maybe. Um, then you can also store your little people in the house, in the envelope, and then take them back out for dramatic play on a different day. Um, so we, we do like making these little popsicle people and their envelope house and playing with them over and over again. Lots of fun, especially if you have one that's really into dramatic play. That means play where they are pretending to do something. So like, um, you know, pretending to cook a meal or pretending to work on things in the sh in the shed or in the garage, things like that. That's dramatic play. All right, the next idea I had that is that you can take care of some baby dolls. So if you have a baby doll um, that happens to be all like plastic and hard, they work pretty well for doing a bath time. So you can either incorporate that as part of your child's bath, give them a baby that needs a bath too, or <laughs> this one looks surprised at that idea, doesn't it? Um, or you can um, get them just a tub of water, maybe put a towel underneath it if you're doing it at home, inside on the floor or something. I would put just a beach towel or something down underneath it. Um, but we do baths here at story time and normally our our bath week is in the middle of February when it's about as cold as possible. It's usually the coldest week of the year. Um, so we do try to be pretty careful when we do our baby bath time. And I usually have my friends um, put on their little waterproof um, gear that we have. But if you don't have any of that at home, obviously you can still do it. Uh, I think probably if I'm doing this at home, I'm going to have my kid down to just their undies and let them just get as wet as they want to get. Or put on a swimsuit and they can give their baby bath. Um, you can also put in a little bit of like some baby soap or something and it would be totally fine. And then just rinse it off. The big thing is that you want to make sure you get them as dried out as possible after you're done. So like on these babies, I have to actually pop the heads off. I know it's kind of twisted. Um, so that they get as dry as possible because we don't want to have mold forming inside. Um, but it works really well with hard babies. So you can do that. You can also have your child feed an imaginary baby. They can cook up some food in their play kitchen or you can make a play kitchen uh, pretty easily if you have some boxes and any sort of drawing skills, you can make a play kitchen. Um, so taking care of a baby, that's a big job. If you have a way to walk the baby, that would be good too. Um, and I do want to encourage that you have both boys or girls play with baby dolls because we all want our children to, if they decide to have children, be good parents, right? All right. So uh, play with those baby dolls. That's a good way to do it. The next idea I had is that you can build a home. So if you have Legos or bristle blocks um, or whatever you used to, that you like to play with, you can even, if you have a whole bunch of popsicle sticks laying around, you can make a house out of popsicle sticks. 
If you have playing cards, you can make houses out of that. Whatever you have around, use that to make a home. Now, not everybody's home looks the same, does it? No, some people live in apartments and you can work on building a really tall structure. Uh, some people live in homes that have wheels or really small homes, tiny houses. So you can absolutely make it look however you want. You can even look up some unusual types of houses and then try to build something like that. Like maybe you find a picture of a castle, try to build a castle. That'd be pretty cool, huh? All right, so building a home is a fun idea as well. I also have another idea for um, a number line counts. So I would do something like, do you know how many people we have in our family? Let's count the number of people that live in our home. That might be a good way to narrow it down. Um, and then, you know, you can practice just counting up to that number. If you have a number line, that's super helpful for them to visualize. But you can also, I, I made a little bit of a number line here, but I left off the number of people that live in my house so that we can do it with a clothespin. We can write the number five on a clothespin and then boop, put it there to finish off the number line. So after you do it with the number of people that live in your house, you can also do it with how many eyeballs there are in your house. And then you could include the pets and make it extra tricky. Or you can count the number of tails in your house if you have a lot of pets. Uh, you could count the number of bedrooms in your house. You could count, I hope you get the idea, the number of mouths, the numbers of hands, the number of people with brown hair or the number of people with yellow hair, because um, they usually refer to blonde as yellow. All right, so hopefully that gives you some fun ideas of ways to incorporate numbers in a meaningful way so that it means something. Because if we're just saying like, one, two, three, four, five. That's not quite as meaningful, meaningful as three, four. What comes in between four and six? And they're trying to figure out, you know, and by counting the number of people in your house or whatever you're doing, um, it really does, it builds uh, meaning to the numbers. So hopefully that helps a little bit there. Uh, so working on their number line was the next idea. The, another idea I had is that you can work with them to draw a family portrait. I saw some really cute ideas of just like stamping a an empty circle like a cup into a stamp pad and then putting that on a piece of paper and then they fill it in with the faces for the people that live in your home and you could do it like that. Um, or you can just let them, if you want a little bit of free time, you can just let them draw it with crayons. Save yourself a little effort. All right, the last idea I had is a little, is a little out there. Um, a lot of times our friends want to use scissors and it's not always the best time and they don't always make great choices with doing scissors, but I have noticed a lot of friends really like the idea of doing haircuts and obviously we don't want them to cut their own hair. If any of my friends are listening right now, you do not cut your own hair. Understood? We use scissors only for paper with permission. That's right or something else if you have permission. I saw a really cute idea where you draw a face on a piece of toilet paper, or not toilet paper, a toilet paper roll, and then you fringe cut all the way around the top. So you could totally do that and like and do the same idea. Or if you have that same baby doll and you have some scrap paper, this is just paper from my planning, um, you can that is, that is some some hair, isn't it? That's kind of what my brother looked like when he was little. Um, so you could do it that way, or let's see if I can manage this. You could do it so your baby has super long hair hanging down. And hopefully this would help satisfy that desire to do a haircut, because I'm going to give this kid bangs, which is almost always a mistake. huh? All right, so I'm going to give this little cutie some things. Oh, I'm making a big mess, but this is fun. All right, that is, it's a very um, ancient Egyptian look that I just did. Yeah, probably give it some layers. Um, it did take me a little while to get my paper cut for this because I was using these scissors. I think if you happen to have some grown-up scissors around, it would just be like one swipe all the way around. If you have a little one that's working on their fringe cutting, which is one of the earliest um, ways that we start to cut. Let me grab another piece of paper. Okay, so fringe cut is just when they 
when you ask them to cut something and they just go. And, and that is hard work because they are still working on closing it, opening it back up. There are scissors that have a little thing that extends out the back. And when you close it, it pops them back out for you. So then the only muscles you're using are the pulling it closed. So if you have a little one that's really struggling with how to use scissors, that might be a nice investment um, for the time being so that cutting doesn't become really frustrating. But this is fringe cutting. So if you want to do the fringe cut all the way around, or you can let your little one do it to practice that cutting skills. And then, um, you know, giving it just a wild hairstyle, um, hopefully would satisfy that desire that the kiddos have to give haircuts. This is um, very soothing, actually. So I can I can see kids uh, doing this for a while. Oh, I missed one. That always happens when I do real haircuts, I hope, too. All right, that's a look. Yeah, so hopefully that gives you some fun ideas of activities that you can do to build uh, cutting skills, build drawing skills, and build some math skills today. I will hopefully see you soon. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Miss you.